Hi guys, welcome to Chosen Explosions End Time Prophetic Revelations. Today in this video, I'm going to be doing a rundown of everything that I feel that, well not everything, many of the things, the most important things that I believe that God is saying to me uh, and to this ministry about the things that is going on in the earth, the things that the Lord is doing and the things that He is going to be doing throughout this coming year and uh I'm not going to talk about everything because, it, you know, it's just way too much. And uh, and if I don't have a sure, sure word for myself about things, then I'm leaving those things alone. Uh, but I will be talking about the things that God is just speaking to me. Uh, like I say, and again, this whole ministry. The things that He is speaking to us over and over again through dreams and visions and revelations. Uh, prophecy things that he is speaking to us okay um, you guys know that it has been almost 6,000 years since creation in the Garden of Eden and um, we know we believe with all of our heart that we are coming upon um, the end of this age that um, from the time of Christ until now, we have been in the last days. That the last 2,000 years has been termed in the Bible as the last days. But we believe that we're in the last of the last days. And we believe that, with all of our heart, according to the Word of God, that a new age is dawning. An age of great light. But we have to remember that uh, before before dawn, it's the darkest. And it is extremely dark right now. So, uh, you know, we have to look at, at both the good and the bad. You know, we have to we have to be able to see the darkness. But, but we, uh, you know, and yes, we have to look at what the enemy is doing. But guys, we know that God's in control. Satan is not in control. And uh, we know that many things must happen. Many things must take place. And God is not shaken, and we are not shaken. And um, we're not, God does not leave us um, in a position where we will not know and understand things. As children of the light, we have light. He dwells within us. And we have the mind of Christ, and He reveals things to us. And He never wants us to be ignorant, and He never wants us to be in the dark. And He never wants us to be afraid. He wants us to, to understand things. And uh, so we have the Word of God, and it tells us many things. And, uh, and we, we do believe that according to the Word of God, the signs of the times, he want, Jesus wants us to be able to see the signs of our times and to be able to discern uh, what is going on. So we have the Word of God as our guide. And, uh, and, and yes, we know that, uh, that the end of this age is coming. We don't know exactly when the end of this age is going to be because... because um, well, it was many years ago, and there's different calendars, and there's just, you know, reasons why we don't have, and God doesn't want, that's the main reason, God doesn't want us to know the exact date, but we know the season. It is given unto us to know the seasons, okay, and the times, and we do know that. We know the seasons and the time. I wanted to read a scripture, Second Peter 3, 8 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Peter's about to give us a key of understanding in the last days. That's what Peter was speaking of when he, when in this uh, passage, he was speaking of last days events. He said, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Guys, we know that God has a 7,000 year redemption plan and almost 6,000 years of it is gone. And so we're going into a new age. We're going into the millennial age. And yes, I know the new age people, they talk about the new age. And, uh, and I talk about, I've talked about this in videos before. That guys, there's only one spiritual realm. 
And uh, spiritual people, whether they know God or not, goes into that same spiritual realm that Christians go into. But here's the thing. If they don't know God, if they're not seeking truth, if, if, if they're not uh, born again and seeking God for truth and reading the Word of God and comparing everything they hear in the realm of the Spirit to the Word of God, then they're being trained by demons. It's doctrines of demons. And what they hear, what the New Agers hear, is partially true. But it's contaminated, it's twisted, it's a counterfeit of the truth, okay? It's, tr it's spiritual truth, but it's contaminated, and it's twisted. But yes, we are on the cusp of a new age. And uh, it, like I say, exactly when that's going to come and exactly how all that's going to come, well, I don't know. God has given revelation. You know, I don't think we'll know exactly when, but I think that as things begin to change and happen, we're going to understand things uh, by the Spirit and by the Word. And I tell you guys all the time, you know, you can't just have Spirit and you can't just have Word. You've got to have both, the Spirit and the Word together, and they will never, ever disagree and if there ever is a disagreement, then stick with the Word of God, okay? Because, uh, yes, we can be deceived by demons. But uh, we know that, uh, that we're entering into the seventh day, a sabbatical rest, okay? It's a thousand-year period where Satan, thank you, Lord, and all of his demons will be locked away, okay? And there's a lot that has to happen between now and then. And it's going to be, it's, it's like giving birth. It's going to be, it's going to be hard, guys. It's going to be labor, laborious. It's going to be difficult. But, but yes, the kingdom of God is going to be birthed. And this new age of light is coming where Jesus Christ will rule and reign upon the earth. And his saints will rule and reign with him, with him as our supreme authority. Okay? And, uh, and we have a lot to look forward to. But like I said, there's a lot that's going to happen. And uh, we have to uh, keep our eyes on God, keep our ears open, press into Him, love Him, uh, obey Him. And He's going to guide us through these, these murky waters. Guys, it's not going to be murky to those who are in Christ. We're going to see clearly, okay? And uh, we will see what we need to see when we need to see it. He'll show it to us. And we can trust Him. He's a good God. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I just wanted to, you know, begin by saying that, that we know that we're in, in, at the end of an age. And we know that the kingdom of God is coming. And it's here and it's coming. And there's a great clash between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But the kingdom of light is already won. We have nothing to be afraid of. But all things must happen in order for it to come out the way God wants it to come out, okay? In order for it to come out correctly. But yes, there there is a... And so that the harvest will come in, guys, that's what it's all about. That people will turn, that uh, people will be set free from the chains of darkness. That they, they will see, and not everyone will see, and some people will reject, that's true. But nevertheless, through the things that's going to happen, many people are going to turn to the light. And we get to be a part of that. So these are very exciting days, very exciting times. If we're walking with God and we're not letting fear and confusion fill our hearts and minds, if we're staying in the center of Christ and allowing Him to be in our center and that we're keeping our, our minds and our hearts stayed upon Him, then uh, we have nothing to be afraid of. It's, it, I think it's awesome and amazing, and I'm excited, but I'm not telling you that it's going to be a bed of roses and it's going to be easy because it's already not easy. Every time we turn on the news, uh, you know, it's, it's disturbing. The things that we're seeing, it's going to become more disturbing. But if we keep our eyes on God, everything's going to be okay. He is our rest. He is our peace. Okay? Okay, so I'm just going to jump on in here, and I forget how many. I won't even tell you now. You might decide not to listen if I do. <laughs> okay, number one, deep deception and darkness will continue to cover many people. Everyone will be given a chance to see God's light, but to those who reject, great darkness will be theirs. And what I just said, guys, fear, confusion, and evil will engulf those who do not turn to the light. So we need to pray. Pray for the world. That everyone will see the light is so important. 
These are very important days we are living in right now. Okay, guys, number two. The fullness of evil is going to happen. The harvest is, is for all seeds that's been planted in the earth. Evil seeds and good seeds. Okay, the sons and the daughters of Satan are going to come to their fullness until the rebellion of Satan is dealt with. Okay, and that's going to happen. That's going to happen. All that's going to be dealt with. But until that happens, guys, we're going to see we're going to see evil get more evil. Okay? We know that Satan's going to be locked away for a thousand years, and then he's going to be released again for one final testing at the end of that one thousand years. But until that time, we're going to see evil come into its fullness. Okay? I know I'm talking about the bad right now, but hang with me. I will get to the good side of all of this. Okay, so evil will get more evil. Many people will go mad and saying, we're going to see more people just going completely nuts. You're going to say, my God, what's happened to people? Well, I'm going to tell you what's happening to people. Demons are overtaking them. Okay, for the ones who reject God, they reject the light. The evil is going to get more evil. They are going to be overtaken, completely possessed, and that's already happening. It's always happened, but it's going to happen a lot more in these last days. Full possession. So we're going to see more and more crimes, and just crimes that you cannot even cannot even imagine. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's, that's the truth of the matter. Okay, it's happening now. It's going to, it's going to get worse. Okay. Great evil, even by those that we trust... Um, guys, some of these may cross over some. I hope not, but I'm sure that they probably will. Uh, guys, I had a dream. I didn't do a video on this dream. But in the dream, it was a doctor. And it was, it was a, a doctor that I know and trust. And many people know, trust, and love this doctor. He's a, uh, he um, is very fatherly. And, and he's, just, he's just a good doctor. But... Guys, the Lord used this man in this dream. And uh, I saw him in the dream doing atrocious, just atrocious things to people. Okay? Sexual torture. And uh, and I know it wasn't him. God wasn't telling me that he's a bad man. I, I know what the Lord was saying to me. He was showing me the, the great increase in evil. And he was showing me... That, there, that there's people who their, their time has not yet come to walk in the fullness of what's inside of them, the evil that's inside of them, and they will be coming to their fullness. And, and yes, it's even people that are loved and trusted. I hate to say that, but it's true. And then the Lord gave me another dream that was very similar, except this time it was an, a very sweet couple, an elderly man and woman, and they were good and sweet and kind, and all of a sudden, they just turned. And, it, and um, torture and death was what they were doing. And, and it was just, it was the same dream, but with a different scenario. And God was showing me that um, it, the takeover, again, the, the takeover, okay, of, of the fullness of evil. The fullness of evil coming forth in people. Actually, demons taking over them. Demons just taking over them and doing the most horrible things. Okay, now, saints of God, don't be afraid that demons are going to take you over. That's not going to happen. Okay, I'm talking about people who reject God and they continue even though God tries to draw them and God tries to work in their lives, but they just, they love the evil, and they just keep going deeper and deeper in it, they're full of demons already, and they keep doing things to get more demons and more demons, yes, there, a time is coming when those demons are going to take them over, and like I say, that, that already happens, but I'm talking about in a much greater measure, okay, number three, we're going to see more crimes by children and against children, and I know this is horrible, and I hate to say this kind of thing. And again, I'm going to talk on the other side of this in a minute. But this is already happening. Um, I didn't even know about it. Christopher, actually, I think it was this morning, said something to me about it. 
did I see that in the news where 2,000 youth stormed a mall around Christmas and nobody was killed, but they were just running through the mall and, and uh, I don't know what they were doing. If they were looting, stealing, you know, just mayhem, you know, running through the mall, tearing things up. And, and, and guys, there, there's, other, there's other things that's been in the news recently about my gosh, I even I just did, I was doing some research this morning on it, but um, I saw a video where teenage girl no, where they junior high, middle school, junior high, and high school girls were just fighting, just beating the heck out of each other in a mall parking lot, and we see things like this all the time, and parents killing kids, and but and guys just you know there's so much evil and. Satan has just targeted, targeted our kids. He's targeted kids and uh, to sow those evil seeds into them. And those evil seeds, guys, words are seeds, okay? Words, all kinds of, you know, pictures, ideas, thoughts, all kinds of bad things and things happening to them, you know, trauma and sexual abuses and, um, uh, all kinds of abuses and all kinds of bad things. Guys, that seeds being planted into them. It opens them up to the demonic. And those seeds are coming to fruition. And again, God has a plan. Let's just pray. Saints of God, let's understand when we see things. Let's understand and let's pray. And here's one thing that, that you can do. You know, and I just I just exhort you as a, as a, a parent. My gosh. Guys, teach your kids about God. Teach them about God. Don't leave it up to the church. You know, God, uh, God is going to hold you accountable for what you put into your children. You know, make sure that they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord. And guys, if they're four or five years old, you know, you can lead them to Jesus. My daughter was uh, uh, saved and baptized with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues at four years old, and I saw my children operate in the gifts of the Spirit very young, very young. So they are not, they are not too young to lead them to Christ. Talk to them about Jesus. Don't leave, don't leave nothing up for grabs, and don't give Satan any room at all. Uh, I mean, just some more ideas. Spend, spend spiritual time with your kids. You know, try to make it fun and try to make it interesting. You know, I see that, you know, they'll make Christian parents out to be ogres, you know, making them recite scriptures, you know, and I think that's perfectly good and fine. You know, my, you know, I, uh, that was a homeschool and that was part of their curriculum to memorize scriptures, um, you know, but, you know, we did it in a fun way. They were proud of their stuff. They got, you know, rewards for memorizing and it was a good thing, you know, but, and spend time praying with your kids and, you know, ask them what, you know, what they want to pray about. Pray for their, um, if they're in public school, pray with their, for their classmates with them and teach them to pray for their classmates. Um, some other ideas is, you know, let them, instead of you reading the scriptures to them, let them read the scriptures and they seem to enjoy that more if they get to do it themselves and let them preach to you if they will, you know, just, just sit there and listen and let them go. I can remember... I can remember in in, uh, in homeschool, you know, my, my son would get mad at my daughter because I would start our Bible class. You know, we did math and all that too, but we had a Bible class, you know, where we, you know, studied the Bible together. But uh, my daughter, she she would get excited and she'd want to preach and she'd start preaching, you know. <laughs> and, and my son would, would just want her to shut up because he wanted to get finished. <laughs> he, he didn't want to be in school all day, so he just wanted her to be quiet so he could get our schoolwork done. But, you know, she you know she, she just got full of God. You know, she got full of, of the Holy Spirit and she wanted to preach. And uh, so, you know, if, you, if your kids want to do that, then take them serious and listen to them. Pull up a chair and say, go for it, baby. Lay it on me. <laughs> preach the word to mama. You know, just let them, let them go at it. Um, and, guys, here's something, you know, um, kids can do signs and wonders and miracles, too. The Lord specifically told me that there was that there is not this year a long time ago, but it's still true. But the Lord specifically told me that there's absolutely nothing that I spiritually that I cannot teach kids 
okay? I was uh, in uh, children's church leader, teachers, teacher uh, many times. And, uh, and in the teaching of my own children, the Lord said, nothing is off limits. You can teach kids to, uh, to heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. You know, teach them, teach them every single thing. Teach them as though they're adults. You can teach them on their level so that they can understand it. But don't leave anything out. All of the Word of God is good, and it's all for them as well. They have the Holy Spirit as well as we do, and they have faith that we don't have. We can learn from them. They have a childlike faith. We can learn from their faith. And uh, so don't hold anything back. And if your kids are not in a position where they're being taught that, uh, the, the very fullness of God at church, then teach them yourself. It's okay. You are qualified to teach your children. Get out the Word of God and do it. Teach them. Talk to them about these things. Practice it with them. Okay? It's a good thing. Guys, we have to... We have to also we have to protect our kids from the things of this world. And I know I'm not telling you guys anything that you don't already know, but we have to be careful because all those evil seeds I was talking about earlier from the television and from video games, and I'm not saying television is bad. All of it's not bad, and I'm not saying all video games are bad, but as parents, God holds us accountable to pick and to choose and just to be careful what goes into our children. Whether they like it or not, you know, you can find something, uh, something that's wholesome and good to replace the things that, that, you, that they may want that you don't want them to have. But it's our job to teach them, teach them how to have a solid relationship with God and teach them that they can hear the voice of God, encourage them. And, uh, and let them know that, yes, that they can get dreams and visions from God just like we can. And if they tell you dreams and visions that they have, take them seriously. Encourage that, you know, and help them to understand. Pray with them about the meaning of dreams they have and visions. Because, guys, God is going to use kids in this last day's outpouring in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine. I cannot wait what he's going to do. But we have, to, we have to protect our kids and we have to sow into them the things of God. Amen. Okay, number four. Um, there's going to be a greater exposure of evil, especially in the church. But not only in the church, we'll be able to see it everywhere. But a greater expo exposure of evil in the church. Guys, you know that Satan has many planted in the church that are not of God, and pastors in leadership and not in leadership. And they're there to hinder the children of God and stop the advancement of the church. That's what they're doing. But God, is he's already doing it, but he's going to do it greater and greater. The revealing of, we'll be able to see. It's called discernment. We'll be able to see more clearly the hearts of those, of, of, of everyone Okay, but God is going to expose evil. Okay, number five, a greater divide in, in light and in darkness. A greater clash between good and evil. As the darkness gets darker, the light will get much brighter. Okay, it will become clearer with whom uh, people stand, good or evil. People who claim to belong to God but want both worlds are going to be forced to choose. Okay, having one foot in both those worlds, that's going to come to an end. I truly do believe that. There's going to be a greater line, uh, dividing line, and people are going to be forced by the Spirit of God to choose whom do we serve, where do we stand, take sides. And that's going to strengthen the church. It's going to... It's going to exercise out of the church those that are not truly of us. So the church is going to rise up in purity. Okay? Because the evil is going to be expulsed from among us. And we're going to be expulsed from, from among the, the evil doers. Okay. Number six. We're going to see greater chaos. We're already seeing chaos. Uh, civil unrest, war, financial storms. God has made that very clear to me in dreams. Financial collapse. 
is coming. It didn't come in September when a lot of people thought it would, even though I'm sure things did happen then that we might not be aware of and some we are aware of, but it's coming. The Lord said that everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. And if it's not of God, it's going to hit the ground. Okay? A cleanup is coming. Cleanup is coming. It's going to come in degrees. And it's going to come in different ways. Okay? So, um, let me see. I think I missed some stuff there. Um, greater chaos. I said that. Civil unrest. War. Uh, financial storms, regular storms, crazy weather patterns. We already see that. We always have. It's going to increase um, greater persecution. All of those things. Okay? Why? It's a war between darkness and light, good and evil. The kingdoms are clashing and people are having to choose. Okay? And it's it's for good. It's, it's for benefit. It's for freedom's sake. Okay. Evil is going to bring this. And also God's judgment of evil is going to bring it. Chaos. Okay. Um, let me see what I... Make sure I didn't skip anything before I move on. God's kingdom is coming more and more. We know that. I've said that. His kingdom is coming. Amen. Our Lord and His kingdom... It's coming in its fullness. Praise God. I look forward to that day. I know you do too. Guys, everything that God does, is, it's not for evil. He, there's nothing evil in Him. It's for the sake of freedom. It's for the sake of restoration. It's for the sake of the harvest. Amen. It's for our benefit. It's for our good. He is good. He is good and we love Him so much. Okay. Um, I've seen it in different ways. Foundations crumbling. I think that goes back to the shaking. Uh, foundations crumbling. Everything that's not uh, built on truth and built on the solid rock who is our Lord and Savior Jesus, it will fall. So we need to make sure that we're standing upon the rock. Okay? Man's opinions don't matter. What people think of us, it don't matter. What does God think? What is His opinion? Is He pleased? That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Are we pleasing to the Lord? Okay? We must put our trust in God because He is in control. Okay. I think I lost... Yeah, no, number seven. Okay. Okay, I think that's most of the bad. Now I'm going to switch to the good. <laughs> Number seven, um, awakening is continuing. It's already been happening. It's not finished yet. Nowhere near it. Think about the darkness that covers the biggest part of the church. But God is waking people up that we, we don't know about. I'm sure of it. I'm sure there's a lot more awake right now than we realize. I know that's true. But nevertheless, the job is not done. And more awakening is coming. More people are going to be waking up within the church to God's truth. And outside the church, they're going to be waking up to truth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that comes from the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Okay? I believe it's going to happen. At times, it's going to happen in mass with thousands and maybe millions of people, their eyes being opened simultaneously. We're going to see things like that in the Great Awakening. Okay? It's coming. It's coming. You know, I feel like that that's really what God is saying more to me than anything else. Revival. I think He's ready. I really do. I think it's time. And I'm going to be talking about that a lot more in other videos. Number eight, the fullness of the sons and the daughters of God. The fullness. We're going to see, just like I talked to you about, the fullness of Satan's children, demons taking over them. Well, God is a gentleman. He don't just take over. And God has showed me what that feels like in a dream. The fullness. And uh, I, I, I actually was prophesying 
in a dream. And, you know, I would imagine that that's what the prophets of old felt when the word of the Lord was so strong. I felt that I felt that I had to speak it because it just it doubled me over. I couldn't even stand straight up. The power of God and the word of God was in me so strong I couldn't even stand. And uh, But yet I knew that I could. I could. I didn't have to. It wasn't like when a demon takes over. I've seen what that looks like. Somebody who's totally possessed and, and the demon takes over and uses their mouth to speak through them. I've seen that many times. And uh, But it was not like that. You know, it's not like that. But nevertheless, you know... Um, in the dream, I just felt like I absolutely had to speak it because it was so overwhelming. But really, I knew that I did. I still had a choice. I didn't have to speak it, but of course, I did. I want to please the Lord. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do whatever He wants me to do. But it was just so much more powerful than what I experience now on a daily basis in the prophetic realm, a much greater is coming, and that's exciting. Okay, but anyway, the fullness of the sons and the daughters of God. Okay, His light is going to shine on us brighter and brighter. Amen. We will be overcome, filled and consumed more and more with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now listen, Satan tries to trip God's people up, so beware. Resist evil, because Satan knows. He knows what's coming, and he's scared. He should be. He should be afraid. He knows what's coming. And so he will try to trip you up and get you into sin, and get you away from God, to discourage you, to make you feel like that nothing's ever going to happen, that God doesn't love me, he isn't with me, he's never going to do this or that, he's not going to do what he's promised. He's a, the devil is a liar. He's a liar, okay? And he'll send all kinds of temptations to try to get you not to uh, keep on going with God, keep on walking. And guys, it's, it's hard. I understand. Listen, I've been through, my family has been through a difficult time in the past year. And uh, many of you have been through even worse times than I have. Many of you have lost loved ones. You've just all kinds of bad things have happened. You've gone through many deep trials. And uh, and sometimes it gets hard. It gets hard to keep putting one foot in front of the other. But we have no choice. And God, whenever we get weak and when, when we feel like we can't go another mile and we're going to give up, that's when he comes in and he swoops up under us and he strengthens us and he lifts us up and puts us back on our feet and helps us just to keep on going. He's so good. Okay, number nine. Open heavens. The opening of ancient doors. The gateways of heaven. The outpouring of the Spirit of God. God has said that to me in so many ways. More spiritual activity. More angelic activity. More visions. More dreams. More miracles. More heavenly encounters. Changing of the spiritual climate. Changing of the spiritual atmosphere. Guys, the Lord has showed me this in dreams where I, I jumped into water that was over my head. I went down, 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 and I was trying to get back to the top of the water, and I couldn't hold my breath any longer, and I started breathing, and, and when I did, I found out I could breathe underwater, and I believe that that's what, that's what God was showing me, the air of heaven, the changing of the atmosphere. Amen. Um, guys, we're going to walk in so much power and so much authority. Demons will flee it, at your presence. Demons will go at your presence. God has showed me so many things like this, powerful dreams, like just the one where I stretched out my hand and said power, but he showed me so many things like that over the years, not just you know, recently, but over the years he showed me so many things like that the last day's outpouring of the Spirit and how much power we're going to walk in where sickness just leaves when we enter the room. And I'm going to be talking about different outpourings where miracles and just all kinds of wonderful things happen. And as great as all those were, I'm going to talk about those things because I believe God wants me to, to encourage you and to encourage me as well. And it, but, but guys, I believe that the, I know the last days, this last 
revival, this last awakening, this last outpouring is going to be so far beyond anything that we have ever seen. But yet it still is fun to look at the things that have, has already happened and know that God's going to do so much greater. Okay. Guys, the captives will be set free. The works of darkness will be uh, destroyed by God and his army. The great rebellion will finally, the rebellion that goes all the way back to Satan. <laughs> in the beginning, in the beginning when Satan rebelled and was kicked because he wanted to be God, he was kicked out of, he was kicked out of heaven. All the way, this, the great rebellion is going to come to a close. It's going to come to an end. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, praise God, that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed in the millennial age. It's not far from us. Amen. The new age. Amen. It's coming, but a great clash is going to come first. So it's already been a clash, but it's going to be a, a great last battle between darkness and light. We already know who's going to win. Okay? Help is here, and it's coming. Rivers of living water are going to flow out of us like, like you can't even imagine. And guys, this water... It will flow out of us, but it's going to flow straight from the throne of God. The water, the river of God is going to flow out of the throne of God. It's going to flow through in us, out of us, through us, all throughout the world. Amen. So our eyes are on heaven. Our eyes are on those ancient doors. Amen. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. We need to believe it and declare it. It's truth. Okay. And guys, there's people that will tell you all kind of lies that will say that this ain't going to happen. That's the devil. That's the enemy talking. Okay? Let me uh, make sure that I got everything out of that one before I move on. Guys, uh, Satan is going to try to trick God's people into rejecting this move of God. Some people have such a little tiny mind of who God is and what he is. And, oh, God won't do that. And they get upset if somebody falls out in the spirit. Or, you know, if somebody shakes under the power of God. And they want to say, that's of the devil. I want to tell you, you be careful. And I'm going to talk about this a lot because it's important. Be careful what you put your mouth to, okay? Be careful because it is blasphemy to say that something that... The Holy Ghost does. It's done by Satan. That's blasphemy. That's the last thing you want to do. If you don't understand it, then go to God. Question God, but keep your mouth shut. But now if, you know, we can know and we can see if something is of God. If people are giving God the glory and if it's doing God things, then it is God. And, and yes, there's going to be counterfeit miracles. Yes, there are. There's going to be counterfeit miracles, but those people are not going to be given the glory. They're not going to be saying that Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, that you can be saved by uh, believing in that, believing in Jesus Christ. They're not going to be giving glory to God. It's not hard. The Bible tells us how to tell the difference. So don't put God in some tiny little box and don't, don't speak evil of holy things, okay? <laughs> that's so important and uh, people will do it even well meaning they're sincere but they're sincerely wrong but it can cost you more and you more pay so be careful be careful and if you don't think the something's of God turn and walk away from it don't have nothing to do with it but we still we have to be careful we have to go by the word of God and if you know if it's a demonic act we'll know we have discernment right we have the Holy Ghost we will know we will know when, when it is not of God. It's not hard to tell the difference. Okay. But listen, because people fall on the floor and shake, that doesn't mean it's not God. You, when you have an encounter with God, you might just fall on the floor and you might just shake. Okay, I've done plenty of both. And I know it was God. Okay. The power of God is awesome. And we're, we're, just, we're just dirt, okay? We're just dust and water. You know, when God's power touches us, we're gonna, there's going to be a reaction, okay? But it's an awesome thing. Number 10. Okay, higher spiritual education by the Holy Spirit. I think I told you guys this recently. You know, the Lord has told me this stuff before. You know, and I went to a Morningstar conference 
last night and uh, this was confirmed. Some of the things that the Lord has been speaking to me was confirmed and I heard things there that the Lord has not told me and I'm not speaking those things in this because I'm just telling you right now what the Lord is telling us and I believe that the things, the other things I heard are true but this was one thing that was confirmed and uh, higher spiritual education by the Holy Spirit. Guys, God has taken us to um, higher. He's taken us higher. Greater revelation. Uh, increase in spiritual spiritual knowledge for those who will seek and listen god has warned uh he and he's warned me for my sake and for your sake that we should not interrupt the holy spirit we should sit quietly in his presence and we should learn and let, listen and learn and that reminded me of the disciples on the uh the mount of transfig you know the transfiguration you know, when the father said, you know, listen to him. This is my son. Shh, listen to him. Be quiet and listen. I feel like God is saying that again. I feel like he is saying that to all of us. Shh, be quiet. Listen, this is my son. Hear what he has to say to you. And trust me, he is speaking. He is speaking. And uh, not just to a few. Not he'll, he'll speak to all of us, guys. He will. Yes, he will use certain ones more in the prophetic realm. But he, but we all belong to him, and he will speak to all of us. So expect and listen, because he has things to say. He wants us to understand things. This is a time, the Bible says that this is a time of, of an increase in knowledge, and not just worldly knowledge. Yes, worldly knowledge as well, with technology and all of that, but spiritual knowledge. Amen. Number 11. Uh, God's army will be mobilizing and strategizing with divine strategies like never before to advance the kingdom. Amen. To lift up Jesus, to destroy the works of darkness, to set the captive free. The internet will be an extremely valuable tool. Okay. The Lord has showed this ministry that he wants us to use, that it is, a, that the internet is a, is a weapon of warfare and he wants us to use it. And so... And I hope that we will increase that this year. That is our prayers, that, that we will increase the work that we are doing. Okay, number 12. Um, there are going to be great prayer movements. I believe that the Lord has shown me that there's going to be great prayer movements. And uh, I know that Franklin Graham is, is doing something with prayer this year, going from city to city. That's amazing. I know that's the will of God. I feel like God is leading this ministry to also do something, do more with prayer this year. I know that that is coming from the Lord. And I believe that God is speaking not only to uh, this ministry and to the grand ministry. I believe that he is speaking to many people and many ministries about prayer, an increase in prayer. Okay, number 13, there will be a greater focus on, the, on true holiness. I believe we can expect that. Not legalism, okay? The holiness uh, movement got greatly contaminated with legalism. And that's not what I'm talking about, but true holiness. A true relationship with God. Not just knowing about God, but knowing God personally and having a love relationship and obeying Him because we love Him. Okay, becoming one with him, becoming more like him. We're going to see that greater, greater in the body of Christ. A focus on true holiness. Okay, uh, I believe there's going to be a greater focus, and I know there is, on intimacy and unity with God. Surrender and submission to him in the body of Christ. The body of Christ has come so far away from what God has for us and has become so friend seeker friendly and you know submission to God is, is not you know the most ear tickling you know sermon there is you know what I'm saying to surrender to your flesh and to become one with God to obey him to fall in love with him there's going to be a greater great more and more I've been saying these things forever but but the church is as a whole is going to begin to say these things more and more because this is the heart of God and God is doing a work in the church okay Let's see. Let's see where I left off.
Um, let me just read what I wrote here, my thoughts when I, when I was doing this. Uh, there will be those that walk in such unity with God that they will see what he sees and feel what he feels. They will have the mind and the heart of God at all times. I know that seems in inconceivable, but God has showed me that and spoken that to me and through me many times. That, that's where he is calling us to, into that type of a place of unity and with the outpouring of the Spirit of God and the fullness of the sons and daughters of God. Listen to me. God is restoring the church. God told me he's restoring the church back to Adam and beyond, back to the Garden of Eden and beyond. We're going to walk in such unity with God. And I know it's hard to imagine right now, guys, but this is going to bring this unity with God. It's going to bring us into unity with each other, which was point number 15, and I'm not there yet. But um, anyway, guys, listen, it's going to bring great power and great authority. The church is going to walk in, so, and I've already said this, but I'm going to say it one more time. We're going to walk in so much power and so much authority that when you walk in a room, the demons are going to leave. They're going to, if demons are in people, those people are going to start screaming out and those demons are going to leave them. Mass deliverances, okay? Mass, the anointing is going to be so strong, the power of God and the authority on the believers the true believers of God who walk with God. The authority is going to be so strong that sickness and disease, I mean, it, it hits the road, okay? When, when, when the presence of God comes into the room on his people, darkness is going to go, and it's going to leave screaming, okay? We're going to see some stuff. You're going to see some stuff, so just go ahead and prepare your mind and your heart for it. I believe that it's going to begin this year. It's already begun, and we'll see an increase this year. I don't think we'll see the fullness. I wish, I wish, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. God hasn't given me time frames on this stuff. I know what's coming. I don't know when. I do believe it's getting sooner and sooner because of the increase in the dreams and the visions about it. I believe it's, I believe it's really close. Okay, number 15, a greater unity to the true believers will come out of both the trouble and out of the outpouring of the Spirit. Okay, there's going to be trouble. We're going to need each other, okay? We're going to quit squabbling and fighting over stupid things. We're going to want the truth. We're going to need the truth. We're going to cling to God, and we're going to cling to each other. Okay, a greater love and a greater unity to the body of Christ. And listen, this is what God... Oh, he's so good. Guys, it's going to be worldwide. Because of the internet, because of technology, we're going to become into unity with saints all over the world. And that's what we're already doing. That's what I'm doing with this channel is, is reaching out and uh, having fellowship and speaking into Christians. And that's causing us to, you know, those who are of, a, of one mind and one heart, that we're, you know, we're mobilizing as, as uh, uh, believers together, we're coming into unity together, and it's such an awesome thing, and it's going to continue to increase. We ain't seen nothing yet, and this ministry, we are looking for ways. We're asking God to help us to be able to, to truly to unite with believers all over the world in prayer and in prophecy, you know, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, talking to each other. And uh, we have that technology at our fingertips, guys. It's just a matter of taking the time and doing it, okay? And uh, and we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing more of that stuff as as uh, as 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 the Lord wills. I'll just put it that way. I have a lot coming against me, but I, I trust God that my husband is going to be healed, and things are going to get a little bit easier around here, and I can get more things done for God that we want to do, okay? And I know that God is going to take care of the financial needs so that we can do more. Okay. Uh, and you guys pray for us for that, that he would meet every need, that he would meet the financial needs of this ministry and uh, and, and the things like my husband being sick. And, and I know that that's going to come to an end. I know that uh, the Lord has given me a word on that, and I know that it will. But just stand in agreement with us. We appreciate that. Number 17 keep having a weather app pop up. The weather here in South Carolina is horrible. Flash flood watches, just terrible rain. 
But anyway, number 17, uh, technology will become more and more an asset to spreading the good news and setting the captives free and bringing the kingdom in, into its fullness. Okay, um, knowledge from heaven of all kinds will flow like never before. Okay, I've already said that, I believe. Okay, this is the final one, and really there's much more that I could say, but this is my final one. A fresh devotion to the Word of God and a much great, uh, greater emphasis on discipleship is coming. Guys, I know that the God is saying higher education, and for many of us, yes, indeed, higher education. But nevertheless, there's going to become, and that's going to be important, it is, it's going to become important to, to guide the church through these troubled waters of the last of the last days okay but uh back to the basics god is saying back to the basics basic discipleship i'm telling you i'm gonna tell you why because with a great influx of people being born into the kingdom we're gonna have to teach we're gonna have to train so discipleship is going to be very important and guys i don't even know if i said it did i say it it just came to my mind again. I don't. I can't remember. Another thing, you know, the, that the army. I did say it. I think I'm gonna say it one more time. The army of God is mobilizing. The army of God is mobilizing. Listen, Satan's people are mobilizing. They really are. They really are. You know, we have all kinds of uh, groups of people in the United States. They're here for evil purposes. They call them sleeper cells. They're all over the place. We have one right here near us. And um, they're plotting and they're planning evil things. And this is something Rick Joyner was talking about last night. And I, I, God has shown me the same thing. I completely agree that, uh, that God's army, we're going to begin to mobilize more and more. And, and uh, you know, we don't plot and plan evil. We plot and plan to do good. We plot and plan to destroy the works of darkness, okay, and to set the captive free, to do good works, to heal the sick to uh, do all the, the good things of God. And uh, that's that. I think that's going to be big. You know, I think the politics of the church are going to fall to the ground with the tribulations that's coming and the outpouring of the Spirit. That stuff's not going to mean a thing. Nobody's going to care. But doing the true works of God in great power and advancing the kingdom, that's what's going to matter. And, uh, and those who care about that don't care about the politics of the church. You know, uh, especially those who are going to be mobilizing in small groups and uh, very powerful, how would I put it, units like um, the Army, the Delta Force, whatever, the Special Forces. That's what I'm seeing. Rick Joyner didn't talk about that, but I think that if I, you know, that's what the Lord has shown me. It's going to be like Special Operation Forces. And, and he was talking about the small groups, like the house churches, just small groups, cell groups from churches, uh, small numbers of the children of God being being trained and, and growing powerful together. And God, you know, yes, yes, we are going. These groups are going to be special operations groups, okay, to do warfare against the kingdom of darkness and to bring, to usher, to help usher in the way of the Lord. Guys, that's what it's all about. To usher in the coming kingdom and to, to usher in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To make way for our King. Amen. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Well, guys, that's all I have for right now. I just want to uh, pray um, a prayer, a blessing over you real quick. Father God, Lord, we just thank you. Oh, Lord, we love you so much. Lord, we thank you for prophecy. We thank you for tongues and interpretation of tongues. We thank you for words of wisdom, words of knowledge. We thank you for miracles. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts, for discernment. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Prophecy is so important. And God, we ask you, Lord, for a greater outpouring. And we know it's coming, Lord. It's you saying it. But we're coming in agreement. We thank you, God, for a greater outpouring on the sons and the daughters of God, Lord, let revival, let, God, let, 
<laughs> Lord, let the river rise and let the wind of your spirit blow over your people today, God. Lord, let them rise up in that anointing that you have shown me, God, that sets demons to run and to flee in God. Yes, Lord God, I just, Lord, I just declare it, Lord. We thank you for revival. We thank you, God, for the outpouring of your spirit. We thank you that the sick are healed. We thank you that demons are cast out in mass. Lord, we thank you, God, that every financial need is met of your people. Lord, thank you, Lord God. You said that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And your people, we receive that, Lord. I speak that over your people, God. Lord, I speak a blessing of finances over your people now in Jesus' name. And I speak healing. I release healing, God. And I just release, God, a greater revelation. Father God, I release to them, Lord, the, the prophetic, Father God. And Lord, every good spiritual thing from heaven. God, we thank you for the doors of heaven being opened, God. We thank you for this outpouring of your spirit. We thank you for the good work that you're doing. We thank you for freedom. Lord, and I speak that over your people right now, Lord God. I just speak freedom, God. I speak freedom, Lord God, to your people in Jesus' name. Freedom from everything that Satan binds them from, God. Lord, I just ask you, Lord God, that every relationship would be healed, Lord God, that their family members would come to know you if they do not, God. And Lord, Lord, fill their mouth with your words. Lord, let them have the exact words that they need to speak. And Lord, I bless their children. I bless their family with the fire of God, with passion and love and zeal of God in Jesus name Lord we thank you we receive it we receive it by faith God and we love you we love you so much Lord God we thank you Father we thank you for a blessed happy prosperous healthy anointed 2016 we receive it by faith we receive it and we thank you for it Lord in Jesus name I pray Amen. Well, guys, Happy New Year's. I love you. You're in our prayers. And I will be talking to you again very soon. Bye-bye.